Thanks for joining me today. This is part one of a two-part series on using esketamine nose spray for treatment-resistant depression. This is being completed as part of my degree. In this video, we'll talk about basic mechanism of action, metabolism, and evidence that esketamine works. First, let's talk about what treatment resistance is. In the U.S., the FDA defines TRD as failure to respond to at least two different oral antidepressants trial to adequate dose and duration. Unfortunately, about a third of all people with major depressive disorder experience treatment resistance. In 2019, esketamine nose spray was FDA approved as an adjunct medication for TRD. It's the only med in its class with that indication. The nose spray is used twice a week to start, then is gradually decreased to once every other week. An oral antidepressant is also taken daily. Due to its ability to quickly relieve depression, esketamine could be a helpful treatment while patients wait for oral medications to take full effect. It's a controlled substance that's monitored by a REMS program. Other common psych meds with REMS programs include buprenorphine-related agents, clozapine, and the olanzapine long-acting injection. So how does this nose spray work? I'm giving you a brief explanation. For more details, see the three minute video linked in the description below. Esketamine blocks the NMDA receptor, which results in a temporary increase in glutamate release. Postsynaptic glutamate binds to AMPA receptors. This leads to a chain of events, which eventually changes protein production. BDNF is a growth factor increased with esketamine use. It promotes neuron formation, repair, and improvements in brain circuits that regulate mood. In order to understand esketamine, it's helpful to know about ketamine. Ketamine has been used safely as an anesthetic since the 1950s and also is used off-label for depression. Ketamine can be divided into an R and an S subunit. The S subunit is called S-ketamine. Interest in the S subunit grew to, to its greater affinity to the NMDA receptor compared to the R subunit. When taken at therapeutic doses, it's also thought to have less risk for adverse effects like delusions, hallucinations, or euphoria compared to ketamine. S ketamine is much more bioavailable as a nose spray than if taken as a pill. About half is absorbed directly into the plasma through the nasal cavity and the other half is swallowed. It's metabolized primarily via CYP2B6 and CYP3A4. For healthy adults under 65, medication peaks in the blood about 20 to 40 minutes after administration. Older adults may have increased absorption time before medication reaches its peak. Half-life for a healthy adult is 7 to 12 hours, but it can be longer for those with liver impairment. Excretion is mostly in the urine. For people of Asian descent, elimination can be slowed. This isn't well understood. After administration, the patient is monitored for at least two hours or until symptoms of sedation and dissociation are resolved. During that time, medication levels in the blood are the highest. The patient shouldn't drive until after a full night's rest, represented by the second dotted line. You'll notice that serum medication levels are much lower by this time. Here's a practice question for review. A new patient requests information regarding how esketamine works. You explain that the medication A modulates glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter in the brain. B helps the neurons in the brain grow and form new connections. C may help reverse structural changes in the brain related to depression. Or D, all of the above. And the answer is D, all of the above. Now let's have a look at the evidence. Most of what we know about esketamine is from industry-sponsored trials. Transform 2 and Sustain 1 were the only statistically significant Phase 3 trials, so I'll talk about them in detail. Participants in Transform 2 were adults with severe depression that had not responded to at least two oral antidepressants. Severity of depression was measured using Madras scale at baseline and after four weeks of treatment. After failing two medications, all participants started a new oral antidepressant and were randomly assigned to a sketamine or placebo nose spray. A sketamine dose could be changed and about two-thirds ended the four-week trial on 84 milligrams twice weekly. At the end of the study, severity of depression was reassessed. Mean Madras score in the treatment group showed a decrease from severe to mild depression. Results showed both treatment and placebo arms had decreased depression severity, which is likely due to adjunct use of a new oral antidepressant in both groups. Reduction of Madras score was significantly greater in the esketamine group compared to placebo. 
Now let's talk about SUSTAIN-1, a long-term two-part study. In order to enroll, participants had to demonstrate clinical response to esketamine over a four-week treatment period. The first part of SUSTAIN-1 was an optimization phase. All participants were maintained on esketamine and oral antidepressant for 12 weeks. Esketamine dose was fixed, but frequency was decreased from twice weekly to once every other week if tolerated. Madriscore was assessed repeatedly to determine if clinical response was continued or if remission occurred. At the end of the optimization phase, patients that demonstrated response or remission went on to the randomized withdrawal phase. In a randomized withdrawal design, an active effective treatment is switched for placebo. In this case, esketamine was removed for a placebo nose spray. Oral antidepressant use was continued in both the placebo and treatment arms for a period of 10 to 18 weeks. During the withdrawal phase, more patients in the placebo arm relapsed compared to those that were kept on esketamine. Patients that had a clinical response at baseline had a 30% reduced risk of relapse if kept on esketamine than if switched to placebo. Those in remission at baseline had a 49% less risk of relapse if esketamine was continued. Overall, more research is needed, especially regarding long-term side effects or issues in diverse patient groups. Recent studies are mostly short-term and have a limited number of participants. There currently are over 30 ongoing clinical trials on esketamine and depression. Some of these trials are long-term, but we haven't seen results yet. There is also a lot of interest in mechanism of action, as researchers look for new ways to relieve depression symptoms.